Okay, the subject today that I'd like to talk about is why should this matter to me? Okay, we've talked about virtual reality uh, in the last video. So, how, why is it important? What's, you know, it's like, what's it to the average guy in the street? Uh, we know that it is a way of modeling reality and that it's competing with a materialistic viewpoint, which is about space, time, energy, mass. And in a virtual reality, you also have time and space is computed, energy is computed, and mass is computed. Everything's computed. So the only thing they have in common is they both have time. Other than that, they're totally different ways of looking at reality. And one of the interesting things from the scientific viewpoint is that virtual reality solves a lot of the paradoxes, of the big mysteries in science. You know, why should particles in quantum mechanics be described as probability distributions? Why should the speed of light be a, a speed limit in this reality frame? Well, why can particles tunnel out of barriers that they should not be able to tunnel out of? And on and on. How does entanglement work? And lots and lots of these paradoxes that science just does not understand. And virtual reality gives very rational explanations. But that really doesn't concern the man in the street. He's not really that interested in the details of physics. What's important to the everyday person about virtual reality is that it makes some pretty profound statements about what we're doing here. Why are we here? If you've asked those big questions, you know, why am I here? What's the purpose of life? What's the point of my existence? How do I know, you know, what's right from wrong? How do you uh, know what's ethical and what's not ethical? These are big questions. And people will tell you, well, that ethics thing and that right and wrong, that's all just relative. Some things that are right some places are wrong other places, and it just depends on what people agree to, how they see the world. Well, that's not quite true. There are some absolutes in morality, and there are some absolutes in ethics. And you do have a very specific purpose for being here, for uh, living this life, struggling the struggles uh, that you find yourselves in. And this lifetime is just a lifetime. You are consciousness, and consciousness is immortal. Well, now that's a big one, right? You are immortal because you are consciousness, and consciousness is immortal. Consciousness doesn't die. The avatar dies. You see, in a virtual reality, your body is a computed avatar. And that computation has to occur someplace else or in other, someplace other than here, someplace not physical, because here is physical. We interpret the reality that we're in as physical and the realities that we're not in as non-physical. So, for instance, uh, when we're in a dream, this reality we call physical, the physical universe, doesn't exist. It appears non-physical to us from the dream state. It just doesn't exist in our dream state. And when we're here, this reality seems physical, and our dream reality seems to be non-physical. So physical or non-physical is just a point of view of the observer. So if you are in this physical reality and you are your body, I should say, is just an avatar that's being computed, then that computer that's computing it and that consciousness that's playing that avatar both have to be non-physical. And they also have to be fundamental. You see, if this is a virtual reality, not only is the computer and your consciousness non-physical to you, which means this idea about your brain creates consciousness is wrong, which means you as a consciousness are immortal, but it also means 
that you have a purpose. You have a point. There's some reason for you being here. Virtual realities don't just exist for the fun of it. They don't create themselves with no purpose in mind. It's a rather large to-do to compute this physical universe. And it wouldn't be done, and the resources wouldn't be used, if it weren't important. And what is your job here? What is it that, that brings you to this virtual reality as a consciousness to play this physical body that is your avatar. Well, you are supposed to grow up here. You are supposed to improve the quality of your consciousness. You are supposed to evolve your consciousness. You see, the computer and the, and the player are both consciousness. Consciousness is an information system. Part of that information system serves as a computer. Part of that information system serves as your player. Your player is playing because it needs to have experience and make choices. And by the quality of those choices, he either evolves or de-evolves the quality of his consciousness. And because this is a hard thing to do, because it, it means that the, the conscious being when it makes good choices and learns uh, how to make better choices, it actually becomes a different being at that point. It changes itself, who it is, what it is. It's not a matter of acting. It's not that it needs to act better or act higher quality. It has to be better. And changes in being actually change the being. So you become somebody else. But it's a difficult thing to do to change who you are. It's something that takes a lot of uh, experience and a lot of choices. And we have to learn how to let go of our fear, how to let go of our beliefs, how to let go of our ego in order to grow up. Now, in, in science terms, I call this lowering entropy. Entropy is a measure of disorder. So the more disorder you have then in your consciousness, the more disorder you have in your consciousness, then the higher the entropy in your consciousness or of your consciousness. Okay, the less disorder you have, which means the more information you have, then the lower the entropy is in your consciousness. And we can make a logical connection, which I really don't have time to do this, but maybe we'll do this on the next video. There is a logical connection between lowering the entropy of your consciousness and becoming love, caring about other, letting go of ego, not being self-centered, cooperative with other people, caring, compassion. All of these things are low entropy behaviors, low entropy ways of being. And that's what you're here for, to learn to become love. Not just act loving. Again, we're not talking about acting. We're talking about being. That's why you're here. You are immortal in the sense that when this avatar dies, it's the same as when your avatar in your video game dies. When your elf dies in World of Warcraft, what happens? Well, you either go get a new elf or you resurrect the old one and you get back in the game. And that's the way it's played in real life. When your avatar dies, you get a new one. You have to keep working. Well, why do we need this virtual reality to do that? Because this virtual reality gives us choice. There's moral choice. There's consequences here. Because of the way the rule set that defines this virtual reality works, we have lots of choices. It's very interactive. The choices we make affect other people. The choices other people make affect us. Constantly you have new things to deal with. You have new crises. You have new challenges. You have new things to make choices about. And all of these choices will lead to your evolution or de-evolution, depending on whether you make them in a spirit of caring and giving and selflessness, or whether you make them in a spirit of you know, greed, self-centeredness, um, fear, 
no trust, that side. So that's why you're here. You have multiple opportunities. You are immortal. You have a job to do. You have a mission while you're here. And in performing that mission, instead of looking at life as how can I control the things in my life to make my life turn out to be the way I want it, you know, so that my, my spouse is the way I want my spouse to be, so that my children grow up the way I want them to grow up, so that my boss, you know, does the things for me that I want him to do for me. I want to manipulate everything. I want to control everything I can to make sure things happen the way I want. Well, that's a very dysfunctional way of looking at life, but that's what most of us do. Instead, what you should do is accept the things that come, mostly the things that you cannot control. Understand that most of your reality you cannot control. Accept that. Live with that uncertainty. And what's important isn't the outcome. What's important is how you deal with that thing that's happening to you. How do you deal with that challenge? How do you deal with that pain? How do you deal with that joy? How do you deal with the things that happen to you? Exactly what happens to you, yes, it's still important, but not nearly as important as how you deal with it. You see, that's where the learning comes from. So if we put our focus on accepting those things that we cannot control and dealing with them in a positive, caring, cooperative way, then we will optimize our lessons here. This virtual reality that we live in is a big schoolhouse. It's a place where we come to make these kinds of choices with consequences. That's why we're here. That's why virtual reality means something to everybody. Because if you do that, if you do grow up, if you do become more cooperative, caring, less ego, less belief, less fear, you will find that your life becomes wonderful. You will live in a state of joy. You will be smiling all the time. You will be happy. You will be positive. You will be one of those persons that uh, just is fun to be around because you're very positive and life will work for you. Whatever you need, whatever is important to your growth will just be there just when you need it just in time. So the reality system rewards those who are learning and growing and becoming love. And for those who are full of ego and fear and belief, well, they struggle and struggle and struggle. And every time they think, oh, if I just get this one last thing the way I want it, everything will be great from then on out. And of course, if they do get that, they find out that doesn't work like that. Something else comes up. There's another challenge. There's another problem. There's always another challenge and another problem that is difficult and just frustrates you because it's just not the way it's supposed to be. Of course, you know the way it's supposed to be because you have this big ego that thinks knows everything or almost everything. So, why should it matter? Well, ask yourself, am I happy? Am I having fun? Is this life a blast? Is joy what I feel most of the time? And if the answer is yes, well, you're on your way. You're doing a good job. Keep up the good work. But if that's not how you feel, if you feel like you're in a perpetual struggle, you can't ever seem to get where you want. Nobody seems to do the things you, that you know they should do that would be better for everyone. Well, if you're in this soap opera life, just trying to get from moment to moment, dealing with the pain as you have to, then this message is important for you because you could turn your life around and find happiness. You'd find that all your relationships get better with your significant other, with your kids, with your parents, with your boss, all the relationships get better everything gets better. So that's why it's important to the guy in the street or the gal in the street. 
because this will change your life if you understand the consequences of this being a virtual reality. If you understand that you are consciousness, you're not a body. If you understand that this non-physical world where the computer and consciousness is, is the fundamental reality, and this computed reality is really a manufactured reality, then a lot of things follow as logical consequences to that. And in the end, whether you're a happy person, a happy camper, whether you're enjoying your life, or whether you're miserable and you're struggling and just can't seem to get it to work for you, well, those are the differences between people who are evolving positively and those that aren't evolving at all or are evolving negatively. So that's why it's important to the man in the street. It means everything. It's important. And the more you understand how this works, the easier it will be for you to change who you are and become that happy person. Now, I've made a lot of assumptions here, things that sound like assumptions, putting things together, like low entropy has to do with becoming love. But all of these are actually logically derived. This is all part of the science of MBT, MBT, my big tap. These are all part of the science of MBT. And there's logic behind all of these statements. I just don't have the time to derive them all logically in this 10 or 15 minute video. So you can find it in the books. The books are on sale wherever books are on sale. And if you don't want to buy them, they're free on Google Books. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube. And if you'd like to find out more about the facts or how to derive these, these ideas, then go to YouTube and watch those videos.